In this lecture, we're going to talk about graphing techniques, specifically graphing using transformations. The first transformation we'll deal with is a vertical shift. Suppose y equals f of x is a function, and k is a positive real number. Then, if you want to look at y equals f of x plus k, where the constant k is being added outside of your original function, that will shift the graph of f of x vertically up by one by k units. And if you want to do y equals f of x minus k, that will shift the graph of f of x vertically down by k units. So let's look at a couple of examples with vertical shifts. First, we want to use vertical shifts to sketch the graph f of x equals x squared plus 4. We'll start with the graph of f of x equals x squared. That's one of the functions from our library of functions. It looks like the parabola below. And since the function we want to graph adds 4 to the x squared, we're going to shift the graph of x squared up by 4. And so the graph of f of x equals x squared plus 4 is the green parabola shown here. We have points negative 1, 5, 0, 4, and 1, 5, which correspond to the points that were on the graph x squared. Notice that for each of these points, the y value has just been added 4 to. So uh, for instance, in the original parabola x squared, we had the point 0, 0. The corresponding point here is 0, 4. Let's try the same thing with the graph of f of x equals x cubed minus 1. So this time we're going to want to start with the graph of f of x equals x cubed, which if we think about the library of functions will look like this. Now since we're subtracting 1 from the function x cubed, we're going to shift this graph down by one unit. And so the graph of the function f of x equals x cubed minus 1 will be the sketch that we have in green here. Again, note that the corresponding points on this graph are the same as the points from x cubed, except the y values have been shifted down by 1. So 0, 0 becomes 0 minus 1, 1, 1 becomes 1, 0, and negative 1, negative 1 becomes negative 1, negative 2. The next transformation we want to talk about is horizontal shifts. So suppose you have a function y equals f of x and h is a positive real number. If you want to look at y equals f of x plus h, that's where the h is being added inside the function, that will shift the graph of f of x horizontally left by h units. And if you look at y equals f of x minus h, where we subtract h within the function, that will shift the graph of f of x horizontally right by h units. So let's look at an example. Let's try h of x equals the square root of x plus 1. So this looks like the square root function, so we're going to start with that as our base function. And from our library of functions, we know that the square root of x looks like this. Next, let's identify our transformation. Since we're adding 1 inside the square root sign, that's going to give us a shift to the left by 1. So we can shift the graph of the square root of x to the left by 1. And so the graph of the function h of x equals the square root of x plus 1 is going to be this graph in green with points negative 1, 0, and 0, 1. So now that we've talked about vertical shifts and horizontal shifts, let's do an example that's going to use both. So we're going to combine the shifts together. Let's think of the function f of x equals x plus 2 quantity cubed minus 3. Since the function we're looking at has a cube in it, we'll start with the base function x cubed, whose graph looks like this. Next, we'll start applying transformations. So since we add 2 within the cube function, that's going to give us a transformation that's going to shift the graph to the left by 2. And then since we subtract 3 outside of the function x cubed, that's going to shift the graph down by 3. So the overall function f of x equals x plus 2 quantity cubed minus 3 will look like this. The next kind of transformation we want to talk about are vertical stretches and compressions. So again, we start with a function y equals f of x and consider a positive constant a then if you take y equals a times f of x, 
where the constant a is multiplied outside of the function, that's going to be the graph of f, either vertically stretched by a factor of a if a is bigger than one, or vertically compressed by a factor of a if zero is less than a is less than one. So let's look at an example of vertical stretches and compressions. We'll start by considering the function f of x equals x squared. So that's the graph of the parabola shown here. Well, what if we wanted to graph f of x equals 5x squared? Since we're multiplying x squared by 5, and 5 is greater than 1, that's going to give us a vertical stretch. So that's going to take each point on the graph of x squared, and it's going to make the y value on each of those points be multiplied by 5, causing this, the graph to stretch vertically like this. So notice the point 1, 1 on x squared corresponds to the point 1, 5 on f of x equals 5x squared. So this makes the graph taller and skinnier. Similarly, we can consider f of x equals 1 fifth x squared. Now this time, since 1 fifth is between 0 and 1, this will give us a vertical compression. So each point on the graph f of x equals x squared will have its y values divided by 5 making them smaller. So the graph of 1 fifth x squared looks like this. Notice it's shorter and wider and the corresponding point 1 1 is now 1 1 fifth. Next we want to talk about horizontal stretches and compressions. Again suppose you have a function y equals f of x and a positive constant a then if you consider y equals f of a times x, where the multiplication occurs inside your function, then that's going to be the graph of f, either horizontally compressed by a factor of 1 over a, if a is greater than 1, or horizontally stretched by a factor of 1 over a, if 0 is less than a is less than 1. So, for example, we start by considering f of x equals the absolute value of x. So that's the v-shaped graph here. If we consider f of x equals the absolute value of 5x, that's going to be a horizontal compression because we're multiplying by 5, 5 is greater than 1. So that's going to take every point on the graph of absolute value of x and it will divide each x value by 5. And so the graph of f of x equals the absolute value of 5x will look like this. Notice it's skinnier and taller, and the point that corresponds with 1, 1 is now 1 fifth 1. Also notice that a horizontal compression is very similar, pretty much the same thing as a vertical stretch. Now let's look at f of x equals 1 fifth x. Since 1 fifth is less than 1 and greater than 0, this is going to give us a horizontal stretch. Every x component on our graph will be divided by 1 fifth, or multiplied by 5 since that's the same thing. So the point 1, 1 will now become the point 5, 1. And so the graph of f of x equals the absolute value of 1 fifth x will look like this. Notice that this horizontal stretch looks a lot like a vertical compression. And the last transformation that we'll talk about are reflections. So let's suppose y equals f of x is a function. If we consider y equals minus f of x, where the minus sign is outside of the function, that will be the graph of f reflected about the x-axis. And if we think about y equals f of minus x, where the minus sign is inside the function, that will be the graph of f reflected about the y-axis. So for example, if we consider the function f of x equals the square root of x, whose graph looks like this, we can use that to graph f of x equals minus square root of x. Now since the minus sign is outside of the square root function, this is going to be a reflection over the x-axis, and so the graph of f of x equals minus root x is going to look like this. We can also do f of x equals the square root of negative x, so since the minus sign occurs inside the square root sign this time, that's going to give us a reflection about the y-axis, giving us this for the graph of f of x equals the square root of minus x. So let's look at an example where we're going to combine several different transformations that we've talked about. We want to sketch the graph of f of x equals 3 times x minus 2 quantity squared plus 1. We want to start by identifying the base function. So since we see a square in this term, we'll start with the base function of x squared, whose graph 
is drawn in blue. Next, we want to start identifying what transformations occur based on the function that was given to us. So the 3 being multiplied outside of the square function is going to give us a vertical stretch by 3. So we'll take the graph of x squared and we'll stretch it by a factor of 3, which gives us this graph in green. Next, the minus 2 inside the square function, since we have x minus 2 quantity squared, that minus 2 is going to give us a horizontal shift to the right by 2. And so the stretched graph will be moved to the right by 2. Finally, the plus 1 on the outside of the square function will give us a vertical shift up by 1. So we'll shift the graph up by 1. And so this gives us the graph of the function f of x equals 3 times x minus 2 quantity squared plus 1. Let's look at another example. This time we want to graph g of x equals negative absolute value of x plus 1 minus 3. Take a couple minutes and see if you can figure out what the sketch of this graph will look like on your own. And when you're ready to continue, just click on the mouse. We start by identifying our base function. Since we see an absolute value in this problem, we're going to assume that our base function is the absolute value of x, whose graph is represented by the function in green below. Again, we next start identifying our transformations. So the negative sign outside of the absolute value bars represents a reflection about the x-axis. So if we reflect the graph of the absolute value of x about the x-axis, that'll give us this function in blue. The plus one inside the absolute value bars is going to give us a horizontal shift to the left by one. So we'll shift the graph to the left by one and the minus 3 outside of the absolute value bars is going to give us a vertical shift down by 3. So we shift the graph down by 3. And so this will be the graph of the function g of x equals negative absolute value of x plus 1 minus 3. The last thing that we want to be able to do in this section is determine what the function would look like if we applied transformations to it. So for example, Find the resulting function after the function y equals the square root of x undergoes the following transformations. It's reflected about the x-axis, it's shifted three units to the right, and it's shifted two units down. All right, so we start by incorporating the reflection about the x-axis. For it to be reflected about the x-axis, we have to put a minus sign outside of our base function. So the reflection about the x-axis will be minus square root of x. In order to shift our function to the right by three units, we need to subtract three inside the square root. So we have f of x equals minus the square root of x minus three. And in order to shift the graph two units down, we would need to subtract two from the outside of the square root. So our overall function is going to be f of x equals minus square root of x minus three minus two.